Okay, so we have done solving polynomial inequalities graphically, right? And how do we do that? We either graph the two inequalities and look for, if it was greater than, we look for where one was above the other, or the smart way, if you're doing it graphically, is to rearrange it so that it's greater than zero or less than zero or greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero because then all you're looking for there is the zeros, right? And we say, well, stuff happens in between. Now, we have some prior knowledge of what things look like. So our basic thing is we first pretty much have to solve this, right? We have to solve it. We have to find out where is it zero, right? So we need to basically kind of rearrange this to get it so that it's polynomial, inequality sign, and zero. When we've done that, we will then find the zeros. How do we do that? Well, just like we did yesterday, it's just basically solving it. Okay? We will then sketch out what it looks like, and then we will give the solution based on those intervals. Right? So if it's a cubic, it could have how many zeros? Four? Four? Two. Right. Okay. If it's a quartic, how many zeros? One, no. No. Could have none. Oh, yeah. You don't have to have zeros. Right. So even degree polynomial functions, open up or open down, may be totally above or totally below, right? May open up and be above, in which case there is no solution. Uh, or it is all. We'll, all the values of x would be the solution. If we're saying greater than zero and it opens up and all of them are greater than zero, then great. Okay? All right, so let's do one. So let's start with one, nice easy one, factored form. Example number one. x plus 2 times 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to zero. And you are to solve. Instructions are solve. Usually instructions should precede the question, but I wrote the question first. So. Okay, so we want to solve that, right? So, how do we solve this? We find the zeros, right? Which are where? Negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, and 1, 3, 4, 4, 6, Yeah, so what we're going to do basically is do this, right? We're going to solve x plus 2 times 4x minus 3 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to 3 quarters, okay? So now we can say, okay, so if I graph this, I have a 0 at negative 2 and 1 at 3 quarters. Which way does this thing open? Up. So readjusting my 0 there. So it looks like this, right? This is negative 2. This is 3 quarters. So when is this polynomial greater than or equal to 0? Okay. So x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than or equal to 3 quarters. Because right? what we're interested in is this and this, including this, right? Because it's equal to. So that will include the zeros. Okay. So basically what we do is we do what we've been doing, or we did yesterday. We solve the equation where it's equal to zero to find those zeros, and then from there we mark them on, we sketch it out, and then we solve the inequality. Okay. We can draw this on a number line as well, right? The solution. You could do, I'm not going to do it, but you could do it, right? Okay, any questions? That's it. That's it for that one. I'm going to do, do another one. <clears throat> I mean, really, that's it. I mean, th there's nothing you can't do, right? But we'll do one more example just because, you know, you all occasionally like to see examples. Yeah, you don't need it. I don't think anybody needs an example. Okay, so what's step one? Yeah, move it to all the ones, which is, even if you're doing it graphically, I would do that, you know, that we call that method two, right? But rearrange the inequality. So let's go 4x cubed plus 9x squared, also write it in order, minus x minus 6 is less than zero. Okay? What's less than? Less than zero. Right, move stuff over. Okay, and now we want to get the p 
PRZ. So what are the possible rational zeros? So let's just make a note here. It's factors of what? Over factors of? Okay, so what are the factors of six? What are the factors of four? Okay, so how many possible rational zeros are there going to be? A bunch, right? So somebody said 16. They're wrong, but they, no, I have no idea, right? I, I don't know. I'm not that smart to look at that and figure it out. Okay, so let's just start with these guys, right? We'll do the integral zeros first, right? So, because you're going to take each of these, putting them over one, okay? We don't really worry about the signs because you'd have like a plus one over a plus one and a plus one over minus one and a minus one over a plus one and a minus one over minus one, but that's really just two values, right? Plus or minus one. So maybe, yeah, maybe you should try listing them. So list them, reduce all fractions to lowest terms. So like, I don't want to see six over two. Okay, so list them all. Then count them, then we'll compare numbers. Okay, so I've done everything over one, now I'm gonna do everything over two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, is that it? Okay. So you will not list anything more than once, and you will not list anything that is equivalent, like going six over two or something, right? Because that's already covered here. So you're basically just combining. You just start with the one, you just start with these, because everything over one. So you're just basically listing the integral zeros, which are factors of this. Okay, then you start by going, okay, let's take everything over two, so we get the half, one, okay, it's already done. Uh, three halves, good. Six over two, three, that's already done. Then you go to, so one quarter, actually, yeah, and then uh, one half, already done. Three quarters, already done. Six fourths, already done. Okay. So, we list all the possible rational zero. So let's try one. Right, so let's just start with one. Pretend we don't have a calculator, we don't actually know. But, but looking at this, we could say, okay, if I put a one in there, that's not gonna be big enough. You know, it's gonna be like minus seven, and yes. that's more than minus seven, okay? It has, to be a it has to be a negative. Because if it's a positive, this is gonna really get big positive, this is gonna be really big, and we're, all we're doing is subtracting that, so okay. So it's gotta be a negative. So negative one, what do we get? Negative four plus nine, plus one, nine plus one is 10, minus 10, sounds good. So I think one works. Yeah, so I think negative one works, but I need to show this, right? So we need to show it. Okay, so we get uh, negative four plus nine plus one, minus six, which is zero. So now what do we say? Therefore, is a factor, right? I don't think we need to state as a factor of the whole thing, right? Just, just saying that 
look, I've got a zero, C, so therefore it's a factor. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to do a synthetic division. Okay, what was the original? What do we have? 4, 9, negative 1, negative 6. Okay, we know that we're going to get a remainder of? And if we don't? Something's wrong, right? We messed up. And if we messed up, what do we check? Everything. You either go back here and recheck this, or you go back and you recheck that. I'd probably recheck this. If not really is zero, okay, that means I messed up something down here. Okay, four, four, five, five, negative six, negative six, zero. Okay? It's not a race. Okay. So, is that it? We're done? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta delete a whole pile of stuff. Yeah, that's true. Eh? So, what we're going to do, this is supposed to be less than zero, right? Okay, so hopefully this factors. Then we use the quadratic formula. And then, and then Grant does not say, can we verify that one? We should verify that. We should verify that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's no common factor here, so it's either a 4x and an x, or a 2x and a 2x, and a 3 and a 2, and a whatever, I need a 5 out of that. How are we going to do that? So if I go 4 and 3, you give me a 12, and then 1 and 2, no. 2 and 3, 2 and 2, 2 and 3, and how about a 4 with a 2? And uh, one plus minus four x squared plus eight minus three. Okay. What do you do after you think you factored it? You check it. Because if this is wrong, everything else is wrong from that point on, right? And if you hand it in early, I can make a little note. You know, hand it in early. Then I'll deduct a lot more marks because you could verify this algebraically, right? So you want to hear stuff in early, that's fine. It just better be all right. Or stuff needs to be checkable. So if you hand it in early and you factored that wrong, it's like, yeah, okay. Uh, any marks from that point on or nothing, right? Like you get one mark for getting the x plus one, and that's it. I give you no marks from that point on, even if there's like three other marks, right? Because you could have checked that, okay? Not that you guys actually hand stuff in early. It's like pulling teeth to get it from you anyway, so. <laughs> okay, where are my zeros? <laughs> okay, it's a cubic. Is it a, uh, this cubic? No, because that would be a negative leading term. It's got a positive leading term, so it's a this cubic. And what were we interested in? It's got to be less than zero. So what's my solution? And we're trying to learn, not get answers. And the less than x. Good answer, Jacob. Is less. I know, right? Okay. So x is less than negative two. And x is between negative 1 and 3 quarters, and this is the way we say between negative 1 and 3 quarters. You could graph this on a number line as well. On A. Okay, which point you would graph open dot? Open dot. All open dot. Okay. Now. Obviously, on a test, you're going to be asked to solve algebraically, solve graphically. If it's graphical, usually you're asked to round then, right? Because maybe they aren't exact values, or, you're right, or they are exact values, but they're root, whatever. But we don't care. We're just going to round it to the nearest hundredth or something. Hundredth is how many decimal places? Tenth is? 
Try and learn that before the next, you know, and round up numerical round response now. questions. I don't know. Well, no, numerical response. It's just there's four boxes. There's four boxes. It could be nearest tenth, could be nearest hundred. The answer is 5.7, and the answer is 5.69. One of them is right, one of them is wrong. You can't enter. You can't put in 5.69 and expect to work. Sorry. Answer said nearest tenth. And on the diploma, that's the way it is. Right? It's wrong. 